All right, I'm going to go through some of these articles from years ago uh, about Karen Thomas. Yes, Karen Thomas was my nephew. Um, it's kind of surreal to think <laughs> that somebody you know from from a child, you know, will be in the news for something, an event like that, that many people found really interesting and became like folklore. Not only here in New York City, but even around the world. Because I was checking in, I saw uh, there was an article from the United Kingdom, but they wanted to use cookies, so I didn't, I didn't pull it up. But anyway, doing some research here, I found out there Thomas and Friends track master Thomas motorized train engine. I never knew about that from Amazon. I don't know if this is the original name or <laughs> whether they took his name and they didn't pay the family any money. Who knows? Hmm? Maybe that's something worth looking into. Let's see here. Now this article I found in, in Tristan. The words that this guy is saying. Because I remember I remember after the incident, um, Karen spoke to me and he said, you know, a lot of this stuff they write in there, Uncle Wayne, it's lies, 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 lies. They make up stuff. They put words in there. And I just read an, was reading an article that, to me, it sounded like Boston, and that didn't really sound like Karen at all. He didn't come across this way. Now, this guy here runs his own website, I guess. Let me see here. What is this? Let me bring this down. Okay, now he says here, uh, 20 years after he swiped the New York City A train for a three hour ride, which included making all stops for hundreds of passengers along the way, Karen Thomas still doesn't like to brag. Even when he pulled off the heist at just 16 years old, I never did it for fame, Thomas told the news. It's not something that I'm proud of, but I don't want people to get the wrong impression. I just wanted to drive a train. Thomas said his May 8, 1993 stunt stems simply from his affinity for subway trains and how they work. He spent months reading books and operating manuals about the city's subway to learn the tricks of the trade, Thomas said. On a Saturday afternoon, Thomas, posing as a mother man, he had befriended to learn more about the job, called the Transit Authority Crew Office and left his home number to sign up for an available overtime shifts. A short time later, his phone rang and Thomas was told to report for duty at the 207th Street Station in Inwood, wearing his motorist waterman shirt. He walked in carrying all the proper operator equipment, safety vests, brake handle, and a reverse key. And they are coming here. Yeah, well, he did research because I remember I used to have like a black, um, in those days, I used to have like a black um, scanner, one of those small scanners. And I did have, um, on it, I did have the, the frequency um, because they operate, I think they operate an HF, you know, HF high frequency. And um, I used to get transit because in those days um, they operated down J Street, to Brooklyn. That's where the headquarters was. Now they moved out of there, and you have New York University moved into the building. You know they sold that building out. But uh, back then, so I was like close to them, and I used to listen, and you would hear like the dispatcher, you know, say like. Like A train 413, which would be like 
30 minutes after 4, out of, out of Far Rockaway, coming to command. You know, and you hear that. And, and I used to have it here, and um, I guess he was, was so taken into it. And then after a while, I didn't know what happened to my radio. <laughs> I think now I know what happened, you know. But I got a different scanner. I got one of those bigger ones that you could put down and listen because I used to like to listen to the fire, the police, and so forth back in those days. So yeah, he really did his research, and he and he um, he was able to listen to how they speak on on the on the transceiver. You know, when you go back and forth. Let me see if I find. Another article here. This is from the New York Times. And this is an archive right here. It's kinda old. Now remember there was no there was no Google back in those days. Nineteen ninety three. Yeah. Google I think came in around two thousand and five. And it says sixteen year old Karen Thomas's obsession with subway trains did not begin in early childhood because in early childhood he was in Trinidad Trinidad and Tobago does not have trains. That's too bad because when my mother and I was was growing up, they had trains in Trinidad and Tobago. But stupidly they removed the trains. You know, I guess they thought, well, they have a lot of oil, they can um, fuel cars and so forth, and now you have a lot of congestion in this and the roads. But the train would have been the best thing. Yeah, because she said when she was a child, she used to get on the train, you know, in Port of Spain. She would get on the train. So that was a very stupid thing that the government did over there. <laughs> By removing those trains because in, in, in most industrialized countries today, you need trains to move people, you know. Not relying on traffic in the street. So I had to throw that comment in there. That was a foolish thing that they did in Trinidad and Tobago by removing the trains. They took all the trains out, but nope. They had trains when the British used to be there. Yeah, I think the British were the ones who put in those trains. Okay, so uh, he would stand for hours near the front door of his family's Brooklyn apartment holding a piece of wood and pretending it was a brake handle calling out the stations in a sing-song voice so clear it made his mother's heart ache. Next up, Franklin. Yeah. Franklin would be Franklin would be in this that stop and that uh that train that goes no. I think it's there's a train that goes over there between uh like Prospect Park. The shuttle it is. That's probably what it is. Yeah. We also have Franklin and uh, the two and the three. So it's, a, it's a very stupid thing he did, Miss Thomas said. I apologize for all the people, all the two thousand people who rode the train. I very much feel sorry, and I apologize for them. Mr. Thomas was charged as an adult with reckless endangerment, a felony that carries a maximum sentence of seven years as well as forgery and criminal impersonation. He was released on his own recognizance after arraignment last night at criminal court in Lower Manhattan. His court date is June 29. Well, there was a lawyer, because I remember going to the office there in Manhattan, who took the case pro bono. And they sound like a limousine and so forth. <laughs> uh, lawyers love to have like interesting cases that they do pro bono work. So pro bono from the Latin, you know, for good, doing good. So this lawyer took the case, and he didn't end up with these kind of stuff or doing the kind of time or prison and so forth. Yeah, it came out more like a nuisance thing. So. That was a very good lawyer. They were they were based down there, I think, around Fulton, around Fulton Street, and in, in Lower Manhattan, in the financial area. That's where the law firm was. So the law firm took care of that. <laughs> you know, when you have the right lawyer, if you're in serious trouble, you know, you can often walk walk out 
and not have to spend time in prison. Here's another article. 20 years later, man reflects on pausing a train operator to take a train for a wild ride. And there he is. This right here is the Brooklyn Promenade. Yeah. Brooklyn Promenade. There's a picture of him right there. Karen Thomas began practicing his stunt by wearing an official blue motorman shirt as he loitered on subway platform where he befriended the worker whose employee number he used to request overtime shift. Uh, 20 years ago he striped an A train for a three hour joyride which included making all stops for hundreds of passengers along the way. Carol Thomas still doesn't Still doesn't like to brag, even though he pulled off the wild heist at just 16 years old, I never did it for fame, Thomas told the Daily News. It's not something that I'm proud of, but I don't want people to get the wrong impression. I just wanted to drive a train. And this goes back to May of 8th, May 8th, 1993, right here. You see him here with detectors. Yep. Brazen de deception, they call it. Led to three years probation, which was extended two years. Right? Okay. And this, he said, this was like a setup <laughs> that happened to him. You know, people see. Your name, you become like, oh wow, this person is famous. Let's come up with something to get him with. So, let's see. They go through the whole thing here about the the real motor man, Sabio, and so forth. Now, Pixie Eleven, Channel Eleven. Brooklyn man famous for his A-train joyride as teenager in 1993 dies at 37. So there it is right there. Mm. Yeah. Thomas who went on to own a truck company died Monday after battling heart disease in New York Daily News reporting was 37. Karen Thomas's path on the A-train. And they go to right here again. And there. <laughs> wow. And say, um, he's pretended for hours. Never in my wildest dream would I think he'd do something like that, his mother said. In court, Thomas immediately apologized to the judge, received three years probation. And so forth. Okay, let's go over. Yeah, let's over here. Let me cover this one. Yeah, cover that. before he died and um, the prognosis wasn't too good at the time you know but when somebody's that age you can't tell them you know I think he had like 50% the heart was operating 
And then sometime after that, I already died. Yeah, unfortunately. Hmm? But such is life. You know? These things happen. Thinking he was a subway motorman. Yes, Judy Most reports on the train bus and his bluff. You know the song, Take the A Train? Well, this guy allegedly took one and got arrested for it. Why did you do it? I think he went out and had a ball. No. <laughs> had a great time. He had a great time. Something he wanted to do, and he did it. What 16-year-old Karen Thomas allegedly did was take the A Train and its passengers for a three-hour spin. No one tried to stop him because they thought he was a real motorman. Was it easy? Ask someone who did it for 10 years. I mean, it's easy to start it up and, you know, move it, but to make proper station stops. Thomas made more than 50 station stops. He took over at the beginning of the A-train route in northern Manhattan and drove all the way to the end of the line in Queens. Then he changed trains and came back to Manhattan. His 45-mile ride came to an end when he went a bit over the speed limit and signals automatically stopped the train. In the words of a transit authority spokesman... Uh, he oper operated the train flawlessly. He got paid for it. Of course he didn't get paid for it. Are you apply for a job at a transit authority? This guy was so good, would you guys consider hiring him? Uh, no, we would not. Thomas is said to be a subway buff. And these are people who just hang out around trains and ask a lot of questions. And some of them know the system as well as the people down here. The suspect's mother reportedly told police that her son has been obsessed with trains ever since he came here from Trinidad a few years ago. Thomas apparently talked often with certain motormen and used the name and ID number of one to call and ask if there were any overtime routes to be had. When told yes, Thomas simply came to the terminal dressed like a motorman, even carrying the proper tools, including a special brake hand. At 16 years old? 16 years 16 old? 16 years old? Yeah. I couldn't even do it at my age. <laughs> Only in New York. Yeah. Until the train came to a stop, the ride was smooth. Why the police walk of the suspect was more eventful. First, Thomas tried to kick a pesky cameraman. Come on. Hey, hey, hey. Then a cameraman fell down. Thomas has been charged with reckless endangerment and criminal impersonation, all for taking a joy ride in something most New Yorkers find little joy in. Ginny Mo, CNN, New York. What do you think about what your son did? Uh, he's a good guy. It's impossible? Yeah, very much. That's how Francis Thomas described his son, Karen. The 16-year-old was walked by transit cops after taking thousands of subway passengers for a ride on the A-train. The teenager posed as a motorman and managed to drive a 45-mile trip last Saturday afternoon, 53 stops and all. Here's the guy who really went out of his way over several years to learn how to operate a train and, and operated it, in fact, quite well. Thomas almost made it without getting caught, almost. Today, he's been charged with a felony, including reckless endangerment. If convicted, it could land him in jail for a year. Police are trying to track down how Thomas was able to obtain a bag of tools that only motormen carry and use his friend's credentials to cut through procedures. That friend, Rigoberto Sabia, a real motorman. The team then took the 10-car train from 207th Street in Upper Manhattan to Leopards Boulevard in Queens and back. But around 168th Street, he tripped the emergency brakes because he was going too fast around a curve. When an inspector tried to haul him in for a drug and alcohol test, the teen imposter ran away, police catching up to him two days later at his Brooklyn home. Karen is a 10th grader at Automotive High School. While this is a city school for car mechanics, everyone knew him as a subway buff who's been arrested for fair beating and trespassing at a train yard. On his bedroom wall hangs two subway posters and his father says he's been studying books like the rules and regulations of the Transit Authority. Fortunately, no one was hurt during Thomas's two and a half hour joy ride. His mother realizes it could have been a catastrophe. You know, other people get the... He can't resist tasting that sticky stuff on the floor. <laughs> Number eight, the hospital gown. Number seven, you notice the train is cutting through a lot of backyards. Yeah, that would tip you off. Number six, when you stop in Times Square, he gives you a show world schedule over PA. And number six, number five, the conductor's cap looks suspiciously like Fruit Loops box. Uh, 
Uh, number four, conductor is sitting next to you with a wad of cotton in his mouth and tape around his wrists and ankles. Number three, on his badge, transit is spelled with a Z. Uh, number two, wearing a belt buckle that says, pull here for emergency stops. And the number one sign, the guy driving the subway uh, is not a transit employee. He's graffiti free. It took riders on a track from Manhattan to Queens, making all the right stops before he was stopped in his track. Stephanie Shelton has the tale. Did you ever dream of taking the A train for a spin? Well, last Saturday afternoon, that's exactly what 16-year-old Kieran Thomas did. It was a scheduled train and made regular stops. He took a ride to Leffitt's Boulevard without any incident. Using a vacationing motorman's name and code number, wearing most of the proper uniform, and carrying a typical motorman's bag of tools like this one, Karen Thomas fooled everyone. For 47 miles and nearly two hours, stopping at 53 stations and carrying some 2,000 passengers. Only when he rounded a curve too fast, setting off the emergency brakes, was he finally stopped. And then only for a routine drug test. But the bogus motorman ran into the J Street station at TA headquarters and wasn't found until early today. There was a dispatcher who really should have verified that he was an employee by checking his identification pass, which has a photo of the eye of the employee on it. And that was not done. It was not done because Thomas is a serious train buff who hangs out with the train crews and has learned the system. His mother, who asked not to be seen on camera, says since her son came to Bed-Stuy from Trinidad three years ago, he has lived, breathed, and dreamed subway trains. He would stand in his bed for hours and pretend, you know, he's a motorman, Franklin. Next stop is Nostrand. <laughs> Stand close to closing doors. I never, never in my wildest dream will I think he'll do something like that. Nor did anyone else in his neighborhood. A nice young kid. He didn't bother nobody. If Karen lived in the suburbs, he might have found a legitimate outlet for his fascination with trains. Train buffs of all ages run steam and other classic trains, and they're always looking for volunteers. But for kids like Karen, this is all there is. If there's some way we could channel that interest and have him be a, a good employee, either for us or for somebody else, I certainly wouldn't rule out that possibility. But for now, the TA plans to throw the rule book at Caron. Criminal impersonation, reckless endangerment. What if he didn't know what he was doing? It could have been death along that chain line. And so reality has blotted out Caron Thomas's fantasy, for now at least. In Brooklyn, Stephanie Shelton, Channel 11, News at 10. Funeral services were held today for a seven-year-old Passaic, New Jersey girl who on his first run in an R44 car like this one to Queens. For the return trip, he was given an R38 like this one to operate, which he did with no problem. But that all changed about 800 feet south of the 175th Street station, in the tunnel right behind me, where the imposter made a serious mistake. There are curves in that area, and in order to keep trains from going more than 20 miles an hour, the, the signals time the speed of the train. If you exceed 20 miles an hour, the signals will stop the train. Uh, at this point, he really didn't seem to know what to do. A uh, car equipment department employee was dispatched to the scene. Uh, he started the train, and the train was taken back to the terminal at 207th Street. But it wasn't until the operator refused to take a routine drug and alcohol test that his fantasy joyride began to unravel. Uh, the fellow took off, running on foot, ran downstairs, uh, to the subway station here. TA officials went to the operator's home only to realize he wasn't the man they were looking for. Riders informed that the bizarre joyride weren't amused. It's very frightening to think that somebody is not supposed to be running the train. Yeah. I, I don't even know what to do with that information. It boggles my mind. The transit authority admits security procedures... Come to the ship. Our I-team reports on attacks that hurt the ridge that hit the wrong target and storm in the hill. General Norman Schwarzkopf talks about the effects of gays in the military. Good afternoon, everyone. First today, imagine being taken for a joyride on the railroad. A teen is charged with doing just that, posing as a subway motorman and commandeering the A-train on a 45-mile trip. Passengers had no clue they were being taken for a ride. The imposter began the journey in Upper Manhattan, taking the train from 207th Street in Inwood to the Lefferts Boulevard stop in Queens and then back again. 
Chuck Gomez has more on last weekend's train. Police this morning charged 16-year-old Karen Thomas, a student at Automotive High, with first-degree reckless endangerment for commandeering an A-train and taking thousands of passengers for a 41-mile, three-hour ride. He picked up a train at 207th Street, took the A-line all the way down through Manhattan, past uh, Central Park, down through Midtown, down through the financial area, through the tube under the river, downtown Brooklyn, and ultimately to the end of the line out at Lefferts Boulevard. Then he picked up another train and did the reverse, and he made it almost all the way to the end of the line. Had gotten through Brooklyn, again through the tunnel, back through the Wall Street area, up past the Central Park area, and just south of 175th Street, he exceeded a speed limit, tripping an emergency brake that stopped the train. Police say Thomas came equipped with all the tools of the train, including a brake handle used to start and stop the train. Transit cops say that Thomas was a serious train buff who may have received tips on commandeering a train from other transit authority employees who were unaware of his planned joyride. Thomas cops say even assumed the identity of a train operator using his pass number to find out what trains were available for him to take. Everybody's going to ask, how did this possibly happen? How could a 16-year-old get on a train and run it? Well, obviously, he, he doesn't look like he's 16 years old. Uh, he's also a young man who's extremely knowledgeable, uh, both about the subway system and train operations. He's the sort of uh, kid who hangs around, who ingratiates himself, uh, who asks a lot of questions. It's really a shock to me. Makes you think twice about uh, someone being able to take the controls of your train. Well, the only way they can take control of, you know, they're allowed to get our handles and everything like that. And this will keep us with us at all times. And I do keep my So you're concerned? Of course I'm concerned. I mean, anybody can just walk on the train and get, you know, um, the right to just take over and drive it. The Transit Authority says an internal investigation is underway and that security is being... Good afternoon, I'm Greg Hirsch, and tonight the Transit Authority is thinking about how it may have narrowly avoided disaster on the A-Train. A kid decides to take a joyride, hops the train, takes the controls, and steals the whole kit and caboodle. Slam, bam, off he goes, riding the rails like there's no tomorrow. But as Sarah Wallace reports live, tomorrow came, and so did the police. Sarah? Absolutely, Greg, and transit police here are still investigating whether 16-year-old Kieran Thomas had insider help or insider training to pull off his masquerade as a train operator. He clearly meant no harm, but could have done harm to a lot of people. Tonight, Thomas is charged with felony reckless endangerment. Kieran Thomas looked more like an overwhelmed teenager than a scam artist today as he was led away by detectives but he clearly took the Transit Authority for a ride on Saturday. Signing in at the 207th Street Terminal under the name of a legitimate motorman on vacation and his pass number, no one asked to see his ID. The mystery, how Thomas got keys and tools which are assigned to individual operators. Starting the train was no problem. Thomas had the reverse key required, but he was assigned an R44 train, the most difficult to operate where the power and brake are in one control. This supervisor says there's no way Thomas could have learned to run that train just by observing someone. You have to practice it. This, this is why I say you're not going to walk onto this train by watching. If you watch me, you would not be able to drive this train the way I do. Incredibly, Thomas made it through 45 miles of track and 53 stops before someone finally sent up a red flag. Quite literally, he ran a red signal at the 175th Street station in Upper Manhattan on the way back, and the emergency brake system kicked in. Thomas bolted when he was brought to headquarters for a blood and alcohol test, but tracked to his Brooklyn home. Today, his mother talked about an obsession that went wrong. I just believe that he tell himself that he can do it, and he's going to prove to himself. I believe the obsession is so great that he wasn't thinking about nobody else more than himself and he wanted to prove that to himself. But he didn't give you any indication that he was going to do something like no, that? No, no. All over the house there were signs of his obsession. He had drawings of tracks. He had manuals of the rules and regulations for the Transit Authority. His mother is absolutely devastated. She told us that she is a housekeeper at a hotel and, no, and now has no money for an attorney, Thomas is definitely going to need one. Live from 
Brooklyn, Sarah Wallace. Jones. This young man, however, uh, did something that required a great deal of thought and a great deal of connections. He had, for example, tools to operate the train, tools that are not readily available. And well-versed he was. Police say the team successfully managed to foil tight security procedures, and this is their version. Thomas called the TA Saturday and identified himself as a train operator. He even gave a legal motorman's pass number. He was told he could operate the A train, the system's longest, and showed up at the 207th Street station around 3 o'clock. He was partially dressed in a motorman's uniform and even had an equipment bag carrying all the necessary tools to operate the train. In fact, he looked so much the part the dispatcher didn't even ask him for a photo ID. He commandeered the train shortly before 4 p.m. Incredibly, he made all the stops, but on the return trip, he was traveling faster than the 20 mile per hour speed limit and tripped the emergency brakes. Transit Authority rules require any motorman breaking the speed be tested for drugs. And Thomas was taken to TA headquarters, but bolted from police. Detectives tracked Thomas to his Brooklyn home by using phone records. Neighbors there described him as a good kid obsessed with trains and cars. If he drive all the way from the Bronx, all the way back over here, and without any incident, don't you think he's worth it? Well, I can't say. Do you think he's worth it? Yes. Police say the teen used the pass number of a motorman he befriended. They believe he may have stolen the tools. However, officials admit it's not that difficult to get tools or uniforms. TA officials believe the dispatcher who failed to check for ID probably could have prevented all of this. Nevertheless, passengers were still concerned about safety. People take the train each and every day to go to work, and that's just a scary situation if you find out your, your life is in the hands of a 16-year-old. Julian Phillips, News 4, Brooklyn. Plan at all. It was a 16-year-old boy, and as Channel 2's John Slattery reports, he really took passengers for a ride. Duke Ellington's Take the A Train has been around for 50 years, and each day, 407,000 New Yorkers do just that. But transit police say 16-year-old Caron Thomas, a native of Trinidad, not only took the train, but took the controls. Thomas moved to New York three years ago with his parents. Arrested last night, police say he's a subway buff. First of all, he apparently has a great deal of inside information to, to pull off a stunt like this. Masquerading as a motorman, taking the controls at 207th Street, driving an A-train through Manhattan and through Brooklyn to the end of the line at Lefferts Boulevard. Then he switched trains, motoring another one back into Manhattan. Successfully stopping at all the stops, just, you know, picking up and discharging passengers on the way. Covering a total of 45 miles in nearly three hours with some 2,000 passengers. How did he pull it off? Authorities say on Saturday afternoon, a man using the name of a real motorman called the TA to say it was his day off and asked if there was any overtime. He was told, yes, there is. Please show up at 207th Street. He came equipped uh, with a uniform, with all of the paraphernalia that every motorman carries, including a brake handle and a reverse key. But apparently, the dispatcher didn't check for an ID. The motorman for a day's only mistake was speeding, which tripped an emergency device that stopped the train. A supervisor arrived to take the would-be motorman for a drug and alcohol test, but he escaped. Yesterday, detectives located Caron Thomas through a friend who is a real motorman and whose tools they say Thomas borrowed. Thomas's mother, who lives in East New York and who didn't want to appear on camera, says her son is consumed by subway trains. He always wanted to be a motorman. And maybe that may be his way of showing them his capabilities. I don't know. On one subway line in Brooklyn, riders had mixed opinions. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Scary. I mean, anyone could drive a subway train if they have access to the equipment. It's kind of frightening. Even if he's convicted, that doesn't mean Thomas can't ever... I think what I was actually saying... Subway, Karen Thomas's trip on the A-train makes the news again tonight. He's the 16-year-old boy who took a subway train on a merry ride through 53 stops on Saturday. He said a real subway motorman told him how to go about it. Lucy Yang talked to that real motorman today and got very much a different story. And Lucy is live now in Brooklyn. Lucy? Bill, 16-year-old Karen Thomas was supposed to tell us his side of the story today, but on the advice of his attorneys, he declined for the time being. In the meanwhile, we did speak today with the motorman who befriended the teenager and says he's now being stabbed in the back for his kindness. 45-year-old Rigoberto Savio spoke with me this morning because he wants to put the brakes on accusations that he was an accomplice in the wild subway caper last Saturday. That's when 16-year-old Karen Thomas, a high school student from Trinidad, got past all the transit security checkpoints, posing as a motorman. 
and drove off with the A train, picking up and dropping off passengers along the way. After Thomas got caught, he reportedly told authorities that Sobio taught him everything. He sat there for 38 minutes on that train. He didn't know what to do. When you panic, you're liable to say anything, okay? People panic. He's covering himself. Sabio says he was friendly with Thomas, but all the while he believed Thomas was just another motorman. Thomas would not speak with us today as he was leaving his house in Brooklyn, but here is an exchange between a young train buff and the command center on Saturday when his train came to an emergency stop. Yeah, we're still not moving, Commander. Mr. Motorman or Conductor? Motorman. Motorman and Conductor. Both of you go through the train and investigate. Motorman just don't sit there in the uh, cab. Stop, command. The train is still not recharging, command. We checked all the emergency calls, and they are right. You checked the fence of brakes. Are the motorman checking around the train now? Here's the motorman to left home, command. As for suspicions that Sabio trained Thomas so that the team could fraudulently work overtime for Sabio, this real motorman calls that a conspiracy to find a sacrificial scapegoat. Sabio says that in the 13 years he's been with the Transit Authority, he's only once claimed overtime for coming in on his day off. Sabio was on vacation last Saturday when Thomas allegedly used his name and pass number to get into the heart of the subway system. I did befriend him, yes, but at no time did I train him. At no time did I offer up any of my personal information and give him license to use that information. How did he get your number and stuff? It's accessible on the computers. It's accessible in the crew rooms. Karen Thomas, meanwhile, has been bombarded with offers to buy the rights to his story, from TV, movies, to tabloid shows. His attorney told me she has even been offered a kickback from one of the more sensational programs. We're talking big bucks here, but first, Thomas must answer to the criminal charges. We're live in downtown Brooklyn, Lucy Yang, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Our train. Sarah Wallace has more on Thomas's revelations. She's live in Crown Heights with exclusive details. Sarah. Well, Roz, we're here at the D-Train shuttle where 16-year-old Karen Thomas says he first learned the ropes, where he first learned how to operate a subway train. He told detectives this was an obsession, but he never had any doubts that he could do it. After all, he had studied all the manuals, and more important, he'd practiced. It was on this subway run between Prospect Park and Franklin Street in Brooklyn last month that Thomas says he first fulfilled his dream as a train operator. He told detectives his motorman friend, Regoberto Sabio, let him sit behind the controls. If he drove the train, he said, well, how can I drive the train some more? And Mr. Sabio, I told him, listen, all you have to do is call the crew office, tell me you want to work all the time, and give him a pass number. So him having Mr. Sabio's pass number I called the crew office. We got a job. We got a job. In sworn statements, Thomas told detectives, quote, Savio told me what to do. He gave me the number of the crew office, and I told them I want to do overtime. He told me to use his pass number. A Mr. Robinson answered and told me the different jobs open. He asked me if I want a job on the A-line. I said yes. When Thomas walked into the 207th Street station, he signed in as Sabio, and no one asked to see his ID. And he had his own tools, complete with a reverse key needed to start the train. Thomas told detectives he had gotten his tools from transit headquarters with this phony ID. An employee had noticed the ID wasn't legitimate, but Thomas just said it was temporary. No problem. He was issued tools. Thomas made it through 45 miles of track and 53 stops before running a red signal and finally getting discovered. Thomas was released to his parents without bail last night. He was supposed to show up to school today, but didn't, apparently stressed out over the entire ordeal. He did have perfect attendance up until last year when a friend says he just started riding the subway all the time. Some of his fellow students at Automotive High School where Thomas is a sophomore wonder why he isn't at Transit Tech, but they all have the same thoughts about what should happen to him now. Because he know how to ride it, so let him just do it. He ain't hurt nobody. He, he drove he it there. Well. He did it well. I think that should give him a job. Well, that's the feeling of a lot of people. By the way, Thomas is scheduled to be back in court later this month. Regoberto Sabio, his motorman friend, is currently on vacation, but has apparently agreed to come in, come in and talk to authorities later on this week. And coming up tonight at 6 o'clock, we'll hear audio tapes. 
tapes of Thomas's voice as he spoke with Central Dispatch as he made that tour on Saturday. Live from Brooklyn, Sarah Wallace, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Karen Thomas loved trains, a lot of young people do, but Karen Thomas may have crossed the line between fascination and obsession. Coming up on Eyewitness News at 5.30, Dr. Jay Adlersberg looks at the fine line and how and why people cross it. A case of shattered innocence today. A seven-year-old girl is in stable condition. Greg, it isn't uncommon for kids to become fascinated with one thing or another, with a sport, with a guitar, or even with a rock star. But while fascinations can be enriching, obsessions can be quite destructive, as was unfortunately the case for young Karen Thomas. He fell in love with the trains when he arrived here from Trinidad three years ago. From then on, Karen Thomas wanted to be a train operator. His stunned mother told Sarah Wallace yesterday her son was fascinated with trains. He will take his school paper and draw all the different tracks. You know, he'll make, his, make up his own schedule, what train we, what station, what time. He was obsessed with it. He was obsessed. Like all teenagers, Karen decorated his bedroom with the object of his admiration. On one wall, a transit authority poster. Nearby, some of his sketches. But the youthful fascination turned destructive when he gave in to the train's seduction. Dr. Eric Hollander, a psychiatrist, says people driven by this type of behavior may have what is called a disorder of impulse control. The level of excitement or the level of pleasure is just so strong that the person's normal uh, defense mechanisms against that aren't successful. They just can't uh, overcome that impulse and they end up giving into the behavior. Gambling is a more common form of this disorder. So is kleptomania, uncontrolled shoplifting, which is done for excitement and pleasure. For adolescents who can become passionately involved with an activity or a person, normal fascination can cross the line into obsession when it starts interfering with daily life and development. If it becomes very, very time consuming, to the extent that he's not participating in his normal activities. If his schoolwork starts to decline, or if he's not able to maintain social relationships uh, because of this preoccupation, then I would say that it's getting to be a problem. We found out that Karen had a perfect attendance record at school last year, but then he began to cut classes to ride the trains, a sign that a problem was developing. Dr. Hollander says that impulse control disorders should be treated and can be treated very successfully with new medications which help reduce impulse intensity. Greg. All right, Jay, thanks. There is much more ahead on Eyewitness News. Broadway comes to the silver screen. An Oscar-winning cast... He train the other day, apparently, because he's fascinated with trains. Now an Eyewitness News exclusive. You'll hear the conversation he had with the control tower while he was driving the train. Sarah Wallace has the story now, live in Crown Heights, Brooklyn. Sarah? Well, Bill, I'm at the D-Train shuttle. Now, this is where 16-year-old Kieran Thomas says he first learned to operate a subway train thanks to a motorman friend. Thomas told detectives that he was completely confident when he took over an A-train on Saturday. He just wanted to live out his fantasy, not thinking about the possible consequences. When 16-year-old Kieran Thomas took the A-train through 45 miles and 53 stops on Saturday, there were no complaints from passengers. And he communicated with Central Dispatch like a pro. These are actual audio tapes. Motorman, you say you still cannot charge the train? Well, the cords are reset, and it's telling how we charge it, man. The train. After I've done, uh, reset all the cords. Did you check the circuit breaker, check the batteries, check all the circuit breakers? And the next thing I want you to check is, uh, check and see if you got a brake pipe up there or anything. There was one anxious moment at Lefferts Boulevard when Thomas was told to change trains and take controls of a different one. When he came down out of the tower at Lefferts Boulevard, he looked and seen that he was going to be driving a different train. But he probably figured to himself that if I could drive this train, I could drive this train. And he did. And when he got inside, he looked around, he said, well, the same controls. I'll give it a shot. And no problem. No problem. Thomas told detectives he had learned the ropes on the D-train shuttle last month after a motorman friend, Regoberto Sabio, let him operate the shuttle back and forth through Brooklyn. It was Sabio's name and pass number that Thomas used when he signed in for work at the 207th Street Terminal on Saturday afternoon for work. No one asked to see his identification. Sabio had been quite a friend. In a sworn statement, Thomas told detectives, quote, 
Savio told me what to do. He gave me the number of the crew office. I told them I wanted to do overtime. He told me to use his pass number. But that wasn't the only lapse in security. How did Thomas get his tools, including the reverse key to start the train? Through central transit equipment, with this obviously phony ID. An employee noticed it, but Thomas just said it was temporary. No problem, he got the tools. Thomas was arraigned last night and released to his parents without bail. He's scheduled to be back in court later this month. Regoberto Sabio is now on vacation. Authorities do want to talk to him extensively. Live from Brooklyn, Sarah Wallace, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Sarah. Quite a story. There was a shooting in Newark, New Jersey. Aaron Thomas is charged with criminal impersonation, trespassing, forgery, and reckless endangerment. The Transit Authority says Thomas made all the right stops on a two-hour, 45-mile trek from Manhattan to Queens and back again. He may have pulled the whole thing off and gotten away, but he took a turn too fast, and that tripped the emergency brakes and stopped the train. Thomas will hold a news conference tomorrow. He's due back in court June 29th. <clears throat>